Now in healthcare, every person in the United States has or will be involved in healthcare marketplace services. In fact, in 2009 alone, over 80% of people in the United States were treated in our healthcare system. That's just one year. Someone has to pay for that healthcare. So the free rider may not be paying, but he sure is riding along. And how analytically are free riders any different from Farmer Filburn? They are not. Even though the free rider individually may have a de minimis effect, they add up and they affect the national healthcare market. And Congress has an interest in and an ability to require free riders to purchase coverage in a way that is necessary and proper for the overall marketplace. Congress has made its decision. Those decisions are squarely within its authority. I hope the Supreme Court will see this debate over its eight and a half hours through that lens. But I suggest to you that if it does not, it would make this court the most activist, interventionist court in a long time. This legislation relates to health care and health insurance. The litigation relates to liberty. There is a distinction. The federal health care bill necessitates the dramatic destruction of liberty in this country. We're focusing today on the individual mandate that all of us must buy government-approved health insurance. Uh, however, in the last three weeks, we have seen more evidence of the necessity for the implementation of this legislation that liberty be crushed, and that is the HHS mandate to all institutions of faith that regardless of their hundreds of years of history in this country of government leaving them to practice their faith consistent with their conscience, this bill does not allow for that. It should surprise no one, even as shocking as that is, given the invasion of liberty that this bill necessitates. Martha just said this is about financing of health care. And I would tend to agree as a general matter, but realize what that means when you get to the remedy. If we prevail and the individual mandate is unconstitutional, the federal government in its briefs has conceded that the private sector health care reforms would have to fall because this they cannot stand without the individual mandate. The federal government has conceded that. But I would suggest that what Martha just said, and which you can find in federal briefs, not in the form of a concession, is that because it is about health care financing, also the elements about Medicaid and Medicare in the bill must also go. You will start to hear more about what's called the IPAB, IPAB, the 15-member board that will decide what you get care for. You won't get to decide. They will decide. These are what some people have called, this is what some people have called the death panels. That might be a bit dramatic, but when you can't get care that determines whether you live or die, I, I see where the name comes from. This expansion, uh, if it is a factual issue, I think would be very uh, fact specific in terms of what burden it places on states. Uh, what is the actual burden? In fact, it's going to have benefits that will offset those costs. Um, and so if that theory is out there, I just disagree with Ken that this is the case for it. I think it's an uphill battle for them to make it. Um, clearly, the idea of carrots rather than sticks is something that uh, Congress can do. It's been upheld. 